Hey guys, it's Hope Love. I'm back. It's Hope Love, 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 Love. Yeah, I kind of was listening to peanut butter and jelly before I came, um, came back. Um, anyway, whew, glad to see you guys here. The ear discussion is advised. Um, so we're here at chapter eight, the aftermath. And let's just say the picture, a little racy. And do I love it? I love it. I mean, you know, because they put like a picture up on like their website where like you see it. It's a some good art. Okay, some good art. I mean, is it hinting at something? Is Kate trying to hint at something? Is Kate Alex trying to tell us that it's about to get hot someday? Maybe not now, but sometime soon. Because there's no warning on this. But maybe sometime soon. I I really want to, like, commend the person who did this. Because their shadow technique is awesome. Okay. And, like, there's Harry and Drake up there. <laughs> and the small little details, like, the wrongs. And, like... The tattoos of each other's names and like the the ties it's amazing anyway let's get into this um by the way this is draw the line again and this was made by kate alex kate alex two t's two x's guys yep jacob cleared his step so what do you want to do after hogwarts well when i was one younger i i wanted to grow into the aura program but i don't think i want to do that anymore wait what no 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 why not you deserve to be in the i'm sorry he doesn't he go on to be in the aura program anyway like in actual lore um i was thinking about being a healer or a teacher i'd really love to teach defense against the dark arts what about you come on <laughs> I'm just, it's not your writing. It's just me, like, talking to Harry. <laughs> it's not the writing, but, you know. Look who's still in questions now. Draco smirked over at Harry. He had moved to lean against his headboard. Draco wanted to tell him to go back to his bed, but he couldn't bring himself to do it to for some reason. There was something about the way Harry looked in his bed I think I want to do something with potions. McGonagall offered me a position here after school. After school, as a potions teacher, Professor, Professor Slughorn is going to retire soon, and someone needs to fill the spot. Okay. <clears throat> He's already checking out Harry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. I didn't get that out, but... Oh, for real? Draco not? Okay, wait, what? Oh, for real? Draco nodded his head at Harry and gave him a small smile. That's cool. Yeah, it would be very fun. What's one place you would want to travel? France. Do you ever sing in the shower? No. Sing in the shower is... Singing in the shower is undignified. How is it so undignified? Okay. Jacob said, sticking his nose up in the air as Harry laughed. The sound made him smile. Are you still dating Whistlet? Who's who? Jenny. Yeah. Jenny, yeah. No, not anymore. Your decision or hers? Draco noticed immediately that he hit another sore spot and inwardly cursed. You don't have to answer. No, it's okay. I broke up with her originally before I left to go hunting for the Horcruxes. But when I got back, I just never tried to get back together with her. I kind of, I feel kind of bad for not even talking to her about it, though. Harry watched Draco's face as he talked. And loved the way his face was so focused on his words. He really liked this side of Draco. Can I ask why? And, oh, not, not, no, you can't. Harry looked away from Draco and avoided his eyes. Especially, he really didn't want to bring up how he thought he might like guys. Especially not before he was sure. You don't have to answer your turn. You don't have to answer to answer your turn harry shot a grateful look 
Have you ever dated anyone other than Pansy? Pansy? I've never dated her. Really? But I thought you guys went to the old ball together. Is that what everyone thought? That I was dating her? Drake laughed. Nah. Nah. I never dated her. Plus, she likes girls. I knew it. <laughs> Don't tell anyone that, though, please. She skinned me for telling you. Duh. Harry laughed. <laughs> Jacob, look of panic. Don't worry, I won't. So you've never dated anyone at all? Nope, not a single person. Have you ever killed anyone? That's two questions. It's my turn, Colton boy. I wish you wouldn't call me that. <laughs> Harry grumbled, it, but ignored. J- but Jacob ignored him. Do you have a crush on anyone? Oh. <laughs> Oh, and Draco smirked. So you do. Who is it? Um, no one. Al draft. Half draft. Do you think I am? Who is it? Hmm, Draco leaned closer. <laughs> and Harry scooted closer to the headboard. Pass. <laughs> this is not how the game works. Oh, he's definitely going to try and pass it. You're no fun. You know that, Draco said. Works now. Ask a different question. You're no fun. You know that? Leaning back from the area, resting his hand. Says you, Draco sticks out his tongue. Harry. Oh, they're an immature of you. The two hour of pun, The hour of punishment had ended a while ago, but the boys had gotten to into the game to stop. They both found themselves five hours later, learning a, leaning against the, the headboard and each other, laughing about something and sleepy. I still can't believe you stuck into the Slytherin's con- commons room with polyjuice j- potion. Draco laughed, leaning further into Harry, lying his head on his shoulder. He'd rather die than admit that he was quite enjoying it, though. Well, he, well, he had known, had to know, if you were the heir. Harry said, scooting down a bit so Jacob could get more comfortable on his shoulder. Jacob scooted over a bit and relaxed. Still, can't believe you thought it was me. Jacob said sleepily. Well, you are. You were in Slytherin, and you're a pure blood, and extremely annoying. We figured you were a great candidate. Wow, you offend me. Jacob muttered his last thing, remembered before he fell asleep. Falling more content and safe than he had felt in a while. Harry wakes, woke to sunlight streaming into the in the windows, he slowly opened his eyes to find blonde hair and a warm body wrapped around him. Draco suddenly shifted closer to him, to him and tightened his grasp around Harry's waist. He couldn't help the smile that crossed over his face. Harry shifted down a bit as he was slightly leaning on the headboard and wrapped his arms around Draco. Who cares if I'm not supposed to like him, Harry thought, as Jacob continued to slide in his sleep. I can, I can continue to dislike him in the morning. Harry woke up about an hour later to a loud thud. Draco had fallen off the bed in surprise at their position, stared at him, and Harry stared at him over the other side of the bed, back away. Eyed and shuddering. What what happened? Last night stays between us, okay? <laughs> like like you uh, you fucked me like you had a one night stand with each other. Draco stared in a panic, <laughs> rendering his face. Harry watched as he retreating from the bed, realizing Draco's bed, and Harry to get up and started getting dressed. He was supposed to take a shower, but he. Decided he'd just take one tonight because he didn't think I could handle seeing him. 
Jacob again when he came out. He spelled his teeth clean and hurried out the dorm where he met Ron and Hermione. Okay. Let's go to chapter nine. Ooh, jealousy. Okay, I think I'm going to stop at like a subtext bar here, maybe. Harry was glowing and Hermione noticed it immediately, nudging Ron and jerking her head towards Harry. Harry came down the stairs with a certain aura around him. And even Ron seemed to notice she had been worried about him since the battle ended. He had moped around the boar boar all summer, according to Ron. Yeah, he probably did. I mean, come on, you have to live with that now. Live that with that people like, you know, you cared about got hurt. And since they got back to Hogwarts, she'd rarely seen him smile. She didn't know what was wrong, but knew it was more than just the war. And whatever happened to make him seem happy today, she'd hope would happen again. Ron seemed equally confused by the turn of attitude, but nevertheless made the best of it and kept it and kept up a lively conversation with both her Harry her, and Hermione. By the time they got to the Great Hall, both Ron and Hermione had shot glances at each other about 100 times. Hey, Harry, Hermione, Ron, Luna greeted them in turn. You look happy today, Harry. And whisk, whisk bouts around your head seem to have been growing lately. What? I, I don't even know what she just said. Um, thanks, Luna. Good to see you, too. Harry said, slightly confused, and then sat down across from her. You're still sitting with the Gryffindors today, Hermione said. Hermione asked, smiling over at Luna, who had you know, seated between Jenny and Neville. Some students had been switching tables recently. McGonagall seemed to be thrilled by it. Yeah, because she didn't care. She was like, how's unity? <laughs> um, uh, thrilled to be by the easy display of house unity. But Luna was the one who switched tables the most, by far. Oh, yes, Jenny invited me today, Luna said, smiled and smiled over at Jenny. Who turned slightly pink around the ears? Mm -mm. Well, we're happy to have you. Hermione smiled. Yep, apparently we all have work spots around our heads today. Seamus laughed at Luna, who smiled at him. What exactly are work sports, Luna? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to know. Mon mumbled a bit, a bite of food at Hermione, who shot a look at him and promptly closed his mouth and continued cheering. This time, his mouth was closed. Well, they're invisible creatures that fly around your head. They usually mean you're dizzy or in love. Ha <laughs> ha! Luna said. They usually mean you're dizzy or in love, Luna said dreamily. Ah, oh, that makes sense, Seema said, leaning back and smirking. You're in love with someone now? Or just dizzy, Ron said, this time with his mouth empty. Harry listened to the conversation as his head was spinning. It means I'm in love? No, of course not. It just means... It's just Luna's made-up creatures again. <laughs> of course, with Dean here, Smear Seamus said, smirking at Ron, and they held up their hands, linking as Dean rolled his eyes. Oh, of course, I should have known, Ron said, <laughs> rolling his eyes and chuckling. Oh, I am a serious Seamus? said as Dean buried his head free hand. We are. Okay. Ron's mouth dropped. Luna looked like this was old news and Hermione gave a wide smile. I'm so happy for you guys, she said as Ron choked on food. Oh, cut it out, Ron. Hermione shot a look at her boyfriend who looked shell to act. <laughs> hey, I'm just surprised. I wasn't expecting that, Ron finally said, recovering. Since when? Well, since about fourth year, 
Dean replied, and Ron choked on his food again. No way, that long? Ginny finally spoke up. I knew you guys were dating, but I didn't realize it had been for that long. Yeah, well, we, well, you guys kept it really well hidden. Though, it does make more sense now, since you guys are cute, make a cute couple. Ron smiled over at them. Thanks, Seamus said. <laughs> Seamus said, and then he noticed that Harry was thinking quietly. His smile dropped slightly. You're right, Harry. You've been quite off. You awfully quiet, huh? Yeah, I'm good. I'm happy for you too. <laughs> of course, he's good. Smile. Harry gave them a smile. Hermione looked at them funny and returned eating. You don't really care, right? <laughs> what? No, of course not, Harry responded. Of course he didn't care. He was just too busy being shocked by the fact that Ron and Hermione had really not cared at all. The visiting world was really different than the muggle world to have a big reaction. Well, the muggle world is pretty different, Hermione. I mean, you know that, of course. Your family is open-minded, Ron said. Then turned to Harry. The only pre- people who care about the stuff he- here is crazy pure bloods trying to keep Harry on their bloodline. Guys, I really don't care. I just was surprised, like girl, Ron. All right, if you say so, Hermione said, giving them a questioning look as she turned back to do um, to join the conversation. The conversation, okay. They took it. They took. It. They took it really well. Harry thought maybe I could talk to them. They might be able to help me, but what if I ended up not being gay? Ooh, I don't really want to cause a stir. I'm not. Breakfast continued with Harry thinking silently about Seamus and Team. Dean shooting him nervous glances. He figured he should probably talk to them later. That's when the post came in. No matter how long Harry had been at school, he was still amazed him. A letter dropped in front of Ron that looked like it might have been from his mom, and that bright pink letter dropped in front of Harry. Everyone turned to look at it. Well, are you gonna open it? Yeah, because Harry doesn't really care. (laughs) That looks like a love letter, Seamus said. You seem to be getting a lot of those lately. (laughs) Okay, yeah, but never one that's glowing like this. Harry trailed off as he continued to stare at the letter. I felt like it might blow up in his face or could, could practically feel the magic rating off of it. He slowly picked it up and opened it and watched everyone's fascination. The second the seal broke, the popped, the thing popped open and spewing little fireworks and fancy cursive writes across the paper. Well, we'll find out what those days in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Hope Love signing off. Don't forget to leave your suggestions down in the comments below with the secret code word that I had in my last episode of the Hope Love Show. Bye!